Local TV host and actor Dustin Lukey is a big supporter and participant of community theater. He shares his process when preparing for a role, his most enjoyable experience on stage, and he gives advice for beginners bitten by the acting bug. I'm Amy, and he's Brent, and this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Dustin Lukey. I was born right here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Grew up in Alaska, and I've been performing in some form or another since as long as I can remember. I actually started singing the national anthem at a lacrosse catbirds game uh, back when I was four years old. So it, it goes way back, as my parents would tell you. And I continued it, you know, all through elementary school, middle school, performing in Christmas pageants and things like that. And then uh, show choir in middle school and high school, the Alaska Hilltopper Show Choir. I kind of got into the acting end of it then again toward the end of my high school uh, career. All my friends were doing it, so I guess it was the good kind of peer pressure, uh, and it just it felt natural. I ended up uh, starting college for theater and uh, then switching to broadcast, but never staying too far away from it. Uh, I was involved in a web series in college, and then kind of started my career, but once I got into a schedule that allowed me to have evenings free, uh, my wife actually encouraged me to just audition, just audition for a show. She had done one before at the community theater and she was pushing me to audition. I was reluctant until the day of auditions for Noises Off uh, back in 2013 at LCT. I auditioned, I got a role and I'm really glad I did because I, I've been hooked ever since again. So what is your process when preparing for a role? I like to get the words in my head, first of all. I, I mean, I know that sounds like such a simple thing. You get the script, you, you should work to memorize it. But getting that uh, out of the way as quickly as I can and trying to commit the words to memory, respecting the ink, the, what the, the playwright has written, I think helps me better find the character, find out why this character is saying these words. What is the background that sort of shaped that? So committing the scripts to memory first is uh, the best thing, I think, for my process. And I actually like to work back to front when it comes to a script. So I'll start with maybe the last scenes and go through that. Uh, even the bottom of the page to the top, because then as I'm going through it and continuing to go down the page, it feels to me more natural to try to commit that to memory. But then once I've got that, it's easier to get up on stage and find those moments with, with the other actors and, and the director and to really shape that character fully. It's interesting that, of course, you need to just kind of memorize the piece before you can start fleshing it out. Using that, what was your most enjoyable role or behind the scenes project? I've been happy to be involved both uh, on stage and, and behind the scenes in a number of projects, but I, I like to point out three in particular that really stick out to me. The first one is the 39 Steps. Uh, that was uh, the second show I got to do at La Crosse Community Theater, and I actually got to do that one with my wife as my romantic interest. So that was a treat in and of itself, but it was a cast of four people I don't know if you know the classic Hitchcock movie, The 39 Steps, it, it, one of his earlier works, but it was a, a serious movie when it came out. It definitely shows the elements of uh, comedy. The play that was written then really plays that up and kind of plays on a lot of Hitchcock themes in a comedic sense. Cast of four, and it's really just creating that theater magic on stage because there's not really an elaborate set or anything. Uh, it's like a couple of boxes, a lot of different costume changes, and you have these four characters playing uh, upwards of 100 characters throughout the, the play. So it was just that true theater magic. Also one that's really relevant to me is 12 Angry Men. I was fortunate enough to be cast in that show back, I believe, in early 2015, uh, directed by Alan Ebert. It just is so relevant, especially now, because uh, it dealt with issues of race and the judicial system. And we would have uh, talkbacks with some local attorneys and judges, too, to kind of uh, bring that relevance of these themes that are still happening in society today to this play that was written decades ago. Just a real special group to be a part of, and that's, that's one that certainly sticks with me. You're talking about memorizing these roles, multi-character, you said up to 100. 
for someone that's uh, wants to jump into this a little bit, or maybe have done a little things in high school, do you have any advice for a beginner? What could someone expect when trying out for a role? Well, the nice thing about a community theater in this area is it seems very welcoming. Uh, when I first auditioned, it had been years since I, I had done a show uh, that involved any memorization. And I was intimidated walking into the building, but the directors I've worked with, the, the fellow actors I've worked with have all been so uh, accommodating. And now I feel like I'm sort of in that veteran role. I would just advise anybody who's interested, come out. There is a show for you. Musicals, you tend to have to prepare a little more, singing and dancing, you know, but they'll even work with that. As far as the, the straight plays, the comedies, the dramas go, you generally have to do a cold reading. So just bring the confidence, I think, is the biggest thing. Find that confidence in yourself and, and just be yourself up there. I mean, the last couple of months have just been difficult for everybody. I've talked to a lot of musicians and artists with COVID and how they're adapting, you know, doing live streams and things like that. How do you believe the community theater can adapt with COVID in this time that we're living in now? Well, certainly, as you mentioned, the live streams uh, are uh, helpful. I know some of the rights uh, licensing companies have now released some plays that you can live stream, sort of adapting to that, understanding that uh, community theaters uh, need this at this time. But there are also some other interesting ideas I know that are being tossed around. I don't know how much I can say. My wife might not be too happy just yet because nothing's been official, but I know there's a lot of creative ideas uh, going on not only for performers, but for audiences. So I guess that's a tease in TV terms. Stay tuned. <laughs> Something good will be coming soon. So what's next for you in acting? Uh, I've been kind of trying to slow down a little bit since uh, our, our boys are getting a little older, unsuccessfully at times because there's just a lot going on and, and it's so addicting to be a part of. I've enjoyed doing the children's shows at the Lacrosse Community Theater. Theater for young audiences, as it's called which are great shows for kids, but also I, I find there's a lot of humor for adults too. They tend to run limited weekends at uh, the Weber Center. Obviously you can't do that this year right now, but they tour to schools then. So being able to bring theater to kids and show them that it's just a, a great way I feel like to keep involved in theater and uh, keep, the, keep the acting chops up, so to speak, while bringing that next generation in as well. And you know, that may be up in the air right now, too. But uh, just, you know, looking for any opportunity to stay connected. We've been doing some private Zoom readings of, of scripts with various theater friends and things like that. So there's a lot of opportunity still out there. It, it's just uh, in a different form, as you said. Where can people find out maybe more about you, maybe local lacrosse community theater, if they want to get involved? This won't last forever, so yeah. people can start kind of searching. Yeah, I, I like the, the phrase that a lot of uh, arts organizations and community theaters are using right now. This is just intermission. We'll be back uh, soon, hopefully sooner rather than later. So I would say as far as getting involved with the community theater, check out their website. Lacrosse Community Theater has one. They've got a good Facebook page. Appleseed Community Theater is another good one, too. And all these organizations, the community theaters, the pump house, arts organizations, the biggest thing you can do right now to help out is, is providing that financial support. I know everybody's going through a tough time, but those who have the means now is when that support is needed. And if you support them right now, you can kind of feel like even more of a process, part of the process, I feel, because just knowing that during this time when it's a rebuilding phase for a lot of these arts organizations, you're part of that early process. So then when you come and see the shows, when you can have the shows again, it'll be even more rewarding as an audience member, I feel. As for checking out some of the stuff that I've done in the past, you can head to DustinOnTV.com. That's my website uh, if you want to learn more about me and my involvement in the community. And uh, just turn on the TV in the mornings from 4.30 to 7 if you want to see me. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you would like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Locals. Subscribe to the Lacrosse Local podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We thank you for it. <laughs>